Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Stitch Sessions. Guess what I've got here? A new tutorial on the wearable web. With Halloween coming up, thought it would be kind of fun to do um, some kind of costume accessory. And this is a, uh, what I call, a wearable web. So it's a spider web design that you can wear as a poncho. So uh, you can make it actually much longer, but I just decided to kind of make it up to my elbows here. And that way, um, you know, if you're getting into the spirit at work, it's not something that's cumbersome or gonna kind of get in your way. Um, and it can kind of keep your shoulders a little bit uh, warm. It's a little bit chilly. Uh, so it's a super easy design. There is a standard web uh, crochet pattern out there. So I just took it and adjusted it so that it could create a little poncho effect. So you just slip it over your head and you are good to go. I also have written the uh, written pattern to this and that's coming up within the next couple of days. So if you don't see it in the description box below, um, head over to our website at crochetcrafty.com and it'll be posted there in the next couple of days and you can just click on it and get it for free and make your own wearable web. It's super easy and really a lot of fun to do. It's great for adults, great for kids, or anyone that wants to get into the spirit of Halloween. So without further ado, let's grab our materials and let's get started. <laughs> Here we go. This is how we are going to begin making our wearable web. I used about two thirds of this ball. This is 142 grams right here. So I used about probably about two thirds, so maybe 100 grams. So um, I really love this, this yarn and the way it's got this cool little metallic uh, tinsel running through it. And I know what you're thinking, ay yeah, yeah, black yarn. Um, but I just love it so much and it came out so great. So um, bear with me, I'm gonna do the best that I can. I'm gonna go really slow and show you all the stitches. It's super, super easy to make. Um, if you know your single crochets and half double crochets and double crochets and chains, you're good to go. Um, so we need the yarn. I'm using a six millimeter hook for this particular project and you'll need a darning needle at the very end to sew in any ends and a pair of scissors. So let's get started. We're going to begin this project with a slip knot. Just like that. And you'll begin with a chain of 80 stitches. So I used 80 because it was just big enough so that I can place my head through it once the, um, the web uh, was finished. So your web should have a hole in the center that you can put your head into. So we will begin by chaining 80. And you wanna keep them fairly Mm, loose-ish, comfortable. So go ahead and chain 80. If 80 is too big for you, the best thing to do is, you know, do up a bunch of chains and then hold it together and see if you can comfortably slip this part over your head. Obviously this is too small. Um, for me, that was 80 for you. Maybe it's 70, maybe it's 90 for you. So. Test that out first, and then meet me back here at the end, and we will continue on to the next section. So here we go, just a little close up here of this yarn. So hopefully you can see the chain stitches that I've started with already. So I'll make sure to try and, and bring it up nice and close like that so you can see. Um, but it is pretty straightforward, and we will also have the written pattern available to you uh, for free. So there you have it. So go ahead and chain up your 80 or whatever number you need and I will meet you back here at the end. Okay, so I have my 80 chains. So I made sure to just hold it at the ends here 
and I was able to slip my head through this uh, opening nice and comfortable. So this is actually going to be the center of our spider web. Okay, so again, I'm just going to hold this up a little closer here so you can see um, hopefully the stitch work okay. Uh, so those are all chain stitches. And of course now all, all of my light, it's either super bright in here or it's not bright at all. Um, but you can see the little bumps there of the chain stitches. So that's 80. And so what I want to do is I want to just make sure it's nice and flat and smooth, not twisted. And I'm going to go all the way to the end here. Here comes the sun. And I'm just going to slip stitch into that very first chain stitch that I did. So I'm just going to yarn over, pull through both of those loops. Okay, and that's going to create my uh, circle here. Okay, and so for round one, we are simply going to chain one. And then we are going to find the very next stitch, which is this one right here. And we are going to do a single crochet into that. Pull through and pull through two. Okay, so all we're doing is we're just beefing up this first um, round here. So I'm going to do that again and just bring it up a little closer. And um, so this is my next stitch here. I can identify it by the bump. And I'm just going to insert my hook, yarn over to pull through, two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two. So I will now find, and don't be afraid to kind of stretch it out. See, I stretch it out and I can see where my stitches are. So my next stitch is this one here. Pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So this is what you're going to do all the way around your row until you come back to the very first single crochet you did. Now remember that you don't want to, you want to keep your tension even because if you start tightening up it's going to start bunching. So you want to keep it consistent, nice and relaxed. So you can see where I've worked into these stitches here on the bottom, those chains. And if you look at the top, usually you can find your V's here, and there goes my light again. So I'll just show you a little bit closer here. Uh, let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. There we go. So you can see the tops of my V's here. Okay? So you can see through the bottom, these are all the stitches I've worked through, and that's what your single crochets look like. So if you are unfamiliar or forget your single crochet stitch, there will be a link in the description box below, just in case you need a little bit of a refresher. So go ahead, continue on, and single crochet one stitch into every single chain all the way around. Oh, I love this sparkly yarn. Okay, I'm coming up to the end of my first round. So again, be careful not to get it twisted because then this is going to become a whole other different project. So don't be afraid to just set it down, lie it flat, so you know you're all on the same, facing the same side. So I'm just going to finish this last stitch here. Single crochet. And then I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of my first full single crochet, which is this stitch here. So I'm just going to insert my hook. So again, you see two loops on the hook, or you're, sorry, you're inserting your hook under the full stitch, two loops there. You pull that through and you finish, I'm sorry, slip stitch into your first single crochet. You're going to pull through and pull through the other one. So now you've sealed off your first round. So this is the initial base here. We're going to do one more uh, round to solidify this uh, center of your web. And this time, 
We're going to use the half double crochet stitch. So that will require us to chain two and then into the next stitch. See, this is where it gets a little easier because you now have stitches that you can stretch a bit and see where you need to go. So as I stretch this, I can see I'm not going to go into this first one here because this is the base of my chain two, which is the height of a double crochet stitch. So I am going to go into the next stitch, which is this one here. So we're going to yarn over, identify that stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And if you need a little extra help, we do have a tutorial on the half double crochet stitch um, that we're going to link in the description box below. But so you can see your half double crochet is just slightly, ever so slightly taller than your single and it's a bit, a little bit fatter. It just kind of fills out the space a little bit more. So that's why I wanted to do another round just to kind of um, really anchor the, the base here. So we will do the same thing all the way around. You're going to do one half double crochet into each of your stitches. So again, if you pull that apart there, so those are your stitches that you're going to work into. And if I turn it a little bit, you can see those V's along the top there. Okay, so I am going to continue on doing my half double crochets, one into each and every single stitch all the way around till I get back to the beginning. And I will meet you there. Okay, we are coming up to the end of row two or round two and I am going to do one more half double crochet into the base of that chain two and I'm doing that just because I want to solidify that space there. So normally I would um, slip stitch at the top of the chain two but in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and slip stitch to the top of that actual half double crochet. And don't worry about it looking bulky, it'll just get nicely hidden in there. So now we've got a nice strong base to work with or the center of our web. So we've got um, 80, in my case, 80 chain stitches. Round one was single crochets all the way around and round two were half double crochets all the way around. Now I know you're thinking, man, that dark yarn or black yarn, I can't really see exactly. But at the same time, it's just meant to kind of really give this a nice solid look in the center. So it doesn't really matter. Even if you decided to do uh, both rows in single crochets, it would work just fine. I just happen to like the idea of building up the stitches. So if I just stretch my work a little bit, and the yarn has got that sparkly tinsel running through it. So I know it makes it a little bit challenging to see, but see if I just spread that out a little bit. So see these V's here, tops, those are the stitches of the half double crochet. And then in the bottoms, these are the single crochets. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Once the rows are done, you are good to go. Now the real fun begins where we spread out our web. So now we are going to use mostly double crochets and chain stitches. So that's why I was saying, even though this is a dark yarn, uh, the stitches are fairly easy and it's straightforward, the pattern. So it should be still okay to follow. So we're going to chain three. So we're going to chain one and then work a double crochet into the base of that same stitch. And usually you'll hear me say chain three to do a double crochet beginning. But in sometimes I will use a chain one and then I will double crochet right into the base of that original stitch. Again, just to create a nice uh, closed in 
gap there. So that's technically my first double crochet. I am now going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to skip three stitches. And as you can see, you can see the gaps there. So this is stitch one, this is stitch two, and this is stitch three. I'm gonna skip that and into the fourth chain, I am gonna do another double crochet. So insert my hook, and it's gonna be a little fiddly there, but just try to keep it nice and even. Oops. Let's try this again. You'll yarn over, one, two, three, into the fourth one. So, yeah, got to be careful not to let that twist because it can make it tricky. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Yarn over, pull through the second two. So, it's going to create a little bit of an opening there. Okay, and it's loose, that's what we want because the web is going to drape a little bit. So, we've chain five, skip three stitches, and into the fourth we're going to do a double crochet. And that's our repeat all the way around. So I'm going to do that again. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to count three stitches over. One, two, three. And in the fourth stitch I'm going to do a double crochet. And again, when you've got a, a long chain like that, you just got to be careful because it's easy for this to get twisted. When you pull through the first time, you want to make sure there's three loops on your hook. And then yarn over and pull through the first two so that you will still have two loops on your hook. So this chain may be, make things a little fiddly, but once you get used to it, it should be A-OK. -okay. So there we go. See, so there's the second one. So I'll do that one more time. Chain five two, three, four, five. I will skip the next three. One, two, three. And into this fourth stitch, I'm going to do a double crochet. Oh, see, it likes to twist. Pull through two and pull through two. So you can already see that the webbing is starting to take effect. So we're going to do that all the way around again until we come right back to the beginning. So go ahead and continue on and I will meet you at the end. And here we are again, back to the beginning. So I've just done a double crochet. I've got one, two, three, I'm skipping. And here is where the fourth one would be. And I'm going to chain five and then slip stitch to the top of that stitch. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just gonna find the top of that double crochet that I created. I'll slip it through both loops, and there we have it. So now you can set it down and you can see the webbing is starting to take shape. Just love this yarn. Okay, now onto this would be row four. Okay, so we're going to repeat it but we're just going to change the chain stitch count in between. So we will chain one and double crochet back into the base of that stitch and I keep them nice and loose so they can keep growing up taller. So this time I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now it should become super easy to find the stitches you want to go into. So you just go over to your next double crochet 
and you're going to double crochet into the top of this stitch. So you're going to say, Karen, where the heck is the top of this stitch? So if I just kind of pull it apart a little bit, see where that gap is coming up? That's the top of the stitch. So if I turn it over, see that's the V right there? Hopefully you can see that. So if I just pull it apart, that opening is where I'm going to go into. So I'm going to yarn over, oh, which I already did, and I'm going to just insert my hook there, pull through, and yarn over to pull through two. Again, I know it gets a little bit twisty, but just hang in there. Once you do it long enough, you get used to it. And there you go. So see, this arch is now on top of this one. So what we did is we went from five chains to six chains, and that's gonna start creating a bit of a droop downwards. Okay, so we're gonna do that again. Chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? And I just find the top of my next double crochet stitch, which is showing up for me very nicely right there. And I will double crochet into the top there. Ooh, gets a little bit twisty. So pull through two. And feel free to hold that base down if it helps you, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna do that again. Chain five, sorry, <laughs> chain six this time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Find the top of my next double crochet stitch, which is showing me that beautiful gap right there. Insert my hook. Okay, make sure three loops on the hook. Yarn over. Pull through two and pull through two. So let's have a look. Yes, that is beautiful. So, so this is the effect we want. So this is basically your collar that's going to sit. You're going to poke your head through here and that's going to sit um, around your neck and shoulders. And then the web is just going to start to drip, droop down. Okay, so this is the basic formula all the way around, round and round. But we're going to spend the first few rounds increasing these chain rows for a while. So go ahead and do that for the end of the next row. And in fact, you are going to do this row and the next row in the exact same fashion. Chain six, double crochet into the top of the next crochet. Chain six, double crochet into the top. When you get to the end, whoops, which is actually here, there, oh, there we go. When you get to the end, you're simply going to uh, chain your six, slip stitch into the top of this double crochet, and then you're going to continue again. You'll double crochet, chain six, double crochet, chain six, double crochet. So we're going to do two rows of the chain sixes. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to finish my rows, and I will meet you when we're ready to go on to row six. Okay, so we've just finished the two rounds of six chains in between each double crochet. So we've now done five rounds. Round one was the single crochets. Round two were the half double crochet all the way around. Round three was to chain five and double crochet, chain five, double crochet. And round four and five were chaining six. So you can definitely see that our web is coming along. But now we want to make sure that the web really expands out. So in this next round, we are going to chain eight, as well as stretch our double crochets a little bit. So I'll show you what I mean. So we're at the beginning of our round again. So we're going to chain one, and I just keep it nice and stretched so it's really loose. And I double crochet into the base here, but I want you to notice how I kind of stretch my loops up a bit, just to kind of give me a wee bit more length. So I pull through two, and I pull through two. So in essence, I'm making the stitch a little bit taller. Now for those of you that are a little bit more experienced might say, why don't you just do a long double crochet or a triple crochet? 
and you can absolutely go ahead and do that. But I wanted to really make this tutorial and this project fairly beginner friendly-ish. So if you know your single, double, and half double crochets, then you're good to go in this project. So that's what I'm going to do in this particular instance. We're gonna stretch our double crochets. So in the previous row, we did six chains. We're now gonna go up to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so now we're gonna find the top of our next double crochet stitch. I'm going to, whoops, yarn over, and I'm gonna insert my hook into the top of that stitch, pull through, and remember I'm keeping it nice and loose. Give me a little bit more height. Pull through two, and pull through the other two. So see my double crochet is just a little bit more stretched than the previous ones. I'm gonna chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, then I'm gonna find the top of my next double crochet right there, that's my stitch yarn over, I'm going to insert there and do a nice stretchy elongated double crochet stitch. And just keeping it nice and loose, just stretching it out a bit. So see now our our web, you can see it's now showing an expansion. Okay, so we're going to do that again. Okay, so I'm going to chain eight. And we're going to find the top of our next double crochet. There it is. If it's hard to see, again, don't be afraid. Just stretch out that stitch and there you go. That little gap there, that's where we want to be. So yarn over and insert your hook right into that space there. And just pull that down, keeping it nice and stretched. There we go. So actually, when you have it on, you'll be wearing it like that. So see your web is expanding downward. Okay, so go ahead and do that all the way around to the end of this round slip stitch and we will continue on to the next row. Once you've completed row six, you'll have something a little bit like this. So you can see the web is really starting to take shape. So now as we go into row seven, this time when we do the beginning double crochet, we're going to chain two because we want to keep stretching that double crochet a little bit. So we have one, two, and now we'll do our usual double crochet back into the bottom of that stitch. And again, we want to keep that nice and stretched to create some height. There we go. So in the previous row, we chained eight. We're now going to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I will go to my next double crochet. And again, you're going to stretch that apart so you can see where the gap is. And you will double crochet really loose, a tall double crochet stitch. So I'm, I'm stretching it purposely so that the height of this double crochet will stretch a little bit taller than normal. So that's creating a larger opening. So with each row we're getting wider and wider. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we go over to our next double crochet. The top of that stitch, 
we want to do a stretched double crochet into that stitch there. Stretching it nice and tall. And there we go. So we can see now that with each row, the gaps are getting wider and we do, let me just turn it this way, we do want to have it drooping down a bit because obviously the weight of it is going to uh, create that. Okay, so I want you to go all the way around and doing the same formula and I will meet you at the end of this row. Once you get to the end of row seven, you will have something that looks like this. So it's definitely taking on that web shape. Now the formula will just continue to increase our chains by two with every row. So you'll do as many rows as you feel you would like to have um, over your shoulders. So for me, I think I'd like to have it go stop at least to where my elbows are. So I'm going to go ahead and do five more rows increasing my chain stitches by two with each row. So we just finished chaining 10. Uh, so in the next row, I'm going to chain 12. In the following row, I'll do 14 and 16 and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do five more rows of this formula. And then um, I'll meet back with you then and we'll see how we're doing. So in this row, I'm now gonna chain 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then I will slip stitch into, and I will double crochet into the top of this double crochet. So again, look for the spaces. And also remember that now, you want to start really stretching that double crochet. So it's just a wee bit longer than a typical double crochet. And so this helps to kind of uh, show off the drape a little bit more without it being too um, cumbersome here. Okay, so that is with the 12 chain stitches. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and do five more rows and I will meet you guys there. Okay, so I have done a total of 17 rows. So it now looks like this. I've tried it on and it fits just the length I would like. I'm so excited about this. Okay, so I am now going to snip my yarn and weave in my ends and our wearable web is done. Oops. So in the end, um, around uh, around row eight, I think, when we were doing the 14 chains, instead of increasing by two, I then continued on by increasing by one. So once I did my eight chains, 10, 12, 14, then I just increased by one because I could see it was really starting to droop. So then I went 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. So my last row has 21 chains in between each double crochet. And again, you can adjust that to whatever uh, works for you. Make sure to continually try this on. I mean, you could definitely make it longer, but... Um, this is it. I'm pretty excited about how this one turned out. And you can um, wear it any way you like. It's not cumbersome. You can wear it to work. And I'm really happy about how this turned out. So there you have it. Here is the wearable web. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, post me some pictures. Let me know how your web turned out. But stay tuned for uh, more tutorials coming up next week, as well as some Stitch Session guests. Take care, everyone, and have a great week.